a lot of people don't realize that caviar has not been coming from Russia anymore. And it opens that door of conversation. And, and now people are more open-minded to absorbing more about different caviars from different places because they don't want Russian product. Beforehand, if we said, oh, our caviar is not Russian, we would almost get this wall of people disinterest or not like, oh, well, I don't need it then because it's not authentic or it's not Russian caviar, but it's still sturgeon. You know, that's what's important is that there are all these different species of sturgeon that are from all around the Northern Hemisphere more than just the Caspian Sea. What's so cool about where we are is that the species of um, sturgeon that comes from California is literally in our backyard. Like it's native to the San Francisco Bay. They would go up the Sacramento Valley to spawn. And so it is a local product. At the time I got into the caviar business in 2004, there were six farms around the world raising sturgeon and only two producing caviar. Thus, California being the birthplace for farmed caviar on the planet. After that, I became the first sustainable caviar company in the U.S. to only sell farm product. Even if there was a wild alternative, we wouldn't do it. Little did we know in 2011, all wild caviar would become illegal and everybody else had to follow suit. But it's so humane and so uh, beautiful to be able to see after 10 to 15 years raising these sturgeon and you have to sacrifice each and every one to get the eggs that I can put them back in the tanks and they can live two more years to, to, until their next cycle and get more eggs from them. How big will they get before we can stop massaging them? I do not know. We will find that out the hard way, I'm afraid. But it is really a game changer in the caviar world.